Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. It is my opinion that Luminar AI is the landscape photographer's dream. Now, I know a lot of portrait photographers love Luminar AI because it has a lot of great portrait tools. And really, the processing engine in Luminar AI is very versatile. You could be shooting macros or in studio product photography or shooting wildlife photography, travel photography. It really doesn't matter. The processing engine in Luminar AI can handle it. But in my opinion, as far as landscape photography goes, the processing engine in Luminar AI is the best available. It does a great job. And today we're just going to demonstrate it. I'm just going to process this simple landscape image. There's nothing special about it. Uh, it was shot with a Fujifilm X-T4. And those of you that are Fujifilm shooters know that raw files from the Fujifilm X-Trans sensors are sometimes a bit difficult to process in some applications. You'll see that Luminar AI has no problem whatsoever processing this image. Now, when you first open up a RAW file in the edit module of Luminar AI, it's automatically going to have the enhance tool open. The enhance tool consists of two sliders, Accent AI and Sky Enhancer AI. These are super powerful sliders, and as the AI suggests, uses artificial intel intelligence uh, to process an image. So if you move the accent AI slider to the right, you can see how it's really processing the entire image. It's adjusting the, the white point, the black point, shadows, highlights, uh, vibrance, saturation, contrast, the whole nine yards with just one slider. And at this point, you could say, well, I'm done. That's the way I like it. This is the way I like it processed. Or maybe you want the sky more like significant or dramatic. You can move the sky enhancer slider to the right. You can see how it only affects the sky. So you could come in and just adjust those two sliders and call it a day. Or maybe just adjust them slightly and then come in and get a finer tune adjustment for light and color using some of the other tools down below. For this demonstration, I'm not going to use these at all. Just to show you some of the other things you could do. Uh, without using these AI tools necessarily. We may use an AI tool down further, but not these two AI tools at least. So we'll close up the Enhance tool. I like how I captured it in camera, so I'm not going to crop it, so I wouldn't do that. Um, there's no sensor spots or anything on the image that I need to erase, so we'll skip that. But we'll go right to Light. And this is where we're going to adjust the tone of the image. Now, typically, when I look at an image, uh, what I do is what stands out the most. Now, for this specific scene, I um, exposed it for the sky. So the uh, ground area, the mountains, the hills, the grass, that's pretty dark. And that stands out to me. So I'll go to the shadows slider, and I'll open up the shadows right away. Then I'll come in, and I'll rain in the highlights a little bit. I like to try to get a little more detail in the like finer parts of the clouds. So I kind of just look in there. I usually won't zoom in or anything like that. I'll just come in and eyeball it like this and try to get a little more detail. Then what I'll do is after I move those two sliders, I'll go to the whites and blacks, or as they have it listed here, blacks and whites, open that up. And what I can do is I could hit the J key on my keyboard to turn on the clipping indicators. And you could see when I turn whites way up, I get red on the screen. That's indicating that I'm clipping the highlights. If you are clipping highlights, that means there's no detail. You're wiping out any detail that was in those highlights. So usually what I like to do is just back it off till all that red dissipates. So then I'm assured that every highlight in this image has detail in it. Now, similarly with the black slider, when I move it to the left, you'll start to see blue come in on the image. And you'll see uh, down here in the bottom part of the image, there's a lot of blue being splashed in areas. That means I'm clipping the shadows or clipping the blacks. Again, that means there's no detail there at all. Now, typically, now this is all personal taste. I like to clip the shadows a tiny bit. Um, to me, that gives my image more tonal depth. I have absolute black all the way through, almost absolute white, not quite. So 
I might have it clipped just a little bit. And I could come back in and readjust like highlights, maybe open those up a little more overall, stuff like that. So just doing these sliders, and to tell you the truth, I kind of don't like them clipping on this image. So it's not like something that I absolutely positively do, positively do every single time, meaning I have the blacks clip just a little bit every time. It's really on an image to image basis. And as I move it down, I just think it's a little too dark down in here. So I'll just have it so it's just not clipping. And I had a little blue over there, but it's gone. So just like that. And that's what I like. So I just moved four sliders and it looks pretty good. Now I might experiment with smart contrast. And to tell you the truth, I don't usually uh, add contrast with the contrast sliders in any application I'm doing. I prefer to get contrast like I just did by um, moving highlight shadows, whites and blacks. That's the way I apply contrast. To me, any other slider is kind of overboard. I don't want that much contrast. Now, I should add, in the case of this image, I skipped a couple sliders right at the top. I skipped the profile drop down and the white balance. The white balance to me was fine, so I just didn't even bother looking at it. The profile, the Luminar, Luminar default profile was fine. Of course, I have a lot of other profiles I could choose from down here in the drop down but I think Luminar default was fine. And the temperature intent, I mentioned the white balance is fine, so I don't have to do anything there. Usually though, if I do adjust white balance, I do it with the eyedropper. So I click on the eyedropper and I click on something that's neutral, like a white cloud, a gray wall, something like that. And that would be my white balance adjustment. Now in this case, it warmed it up just a slight, a slight amount. I'm going to undo that by hitting Command Z, as in Zebra on my Mac. It's Control Z on a PC. So I don't uh, apply that uh, temperature white balance adjustment. So um, I like it. Now, if I did want to mess around though with contrast at all, I would usually use curves to do it. And I would put a gentle S curve in, in the image. Now, I don't think this image needs it, but I'll demonstrate it anyway. What I would do is I'd put up a point right in the middle then I'd go down to the bottom left hand corner of the curve right around here. This is the shadows and I'd make the shadows a little darker by pulling down on the curve. Then over here at the top, I'd go, this is where the highlights reside. I'd put a point there and push up a little bit. So I'm making the highlights a little brighter. And that's pretty much what contrast is. You're making the whiter parts or the brighter parts brighter and the darker parts darker. Now, again, I'm going to hit Command Z a few times to undo those adjustments because I don't want them on this image. I don't think it needs it. So I'm done with light. Um, next, I'm going to skip structure and go down to color. And one thing I should add, this was shot at the lowest available ISO on the X-T4, which I think was 160. I actually love this camera, but a friend of mine really wanted it. So I sold it to him. And... Um, I don't have it anymore, so I think it's ISO 160. But anyway, my friend's um, a wedding photographer, and he was upgrading his equipment. He's actually switching from Nikon to Fuji, and he uh, asked me if I was interested in selling him the camera, and I gave him a deal on it. So he now owns this camera, but that's beside the point. As I was saying, uh, it was shot at very low S ISO, so there really isn't any noise to speak of. So I really don't have to worry about going to denoise uh, right now. But usually after I do tone, I'll go to noise and I'll remove noise next. Then what I'll do is I'll go to color. And with color, um, this image is pretty saturated color. So I'm not even going to move the saturation and vibrant sliders. And this is one thing I remind... Um, a lot of people that are new to post-processing is just because a slider is there doesn't mean you have to use it. Um, uh, seems like most photographers always add saturation or vibrance or both every single time. You really don't. Um, then part of the reason why is in this image, I'm going to go down to the HSL part of the color tool and I'm going to go first of all to luminance and I want to brighten up the green grasses and uh, there's a lot of yellow in there, so I'm going to move yellow to the right and see how it's just brightening it up. And it's giving me, again, more tonal variance across the image. It's given me some lighter tones uh, contrasted against some darker tones. So we have some light green with darker green and 
throughout the hills the same thing. And I could even bring that even stronger. I could move green to the left, but I'm not going to do that. I don't think we need to. Um, I'm going to make the blue sky just a little darker by moving blue to the left just a little bit. Cyan maybe a little bit too. You'll see cyan will affect the sky usually more towards the horizon uh, compared to the blue slider. So I'll bring that down. Now I'm going to go to the saturation. And this is where I'll use some selective saturation. I want to make those yellows a little more saturated. The greens a bit more saturated. And maybe the blue just a touch. Just a touch. Just like that. So I'm done. I'm done with color. Then what I'll do is I'll kind of experiment. I'll jump back up to structure and see if adding structure is something I want to do. And you can see I still have the clipping indicators off. You can see as I move the amount of structure to the right, I'm getting clipping. Uh, that's good maybe to leave them on, but usually, tell you the truth, I'll turn them off right away. It's just in doing this video and chatting here, I forgot to do it. To turn the clipping indicators back off, just hit the J key on your keyboard again. J as in Jack, and you turn them off. Now, I'm going to undo that. I don't think I need any structure on this landscape image. I'm not going to convert it to black and white. Let's go to details though, and maybe we'll um, sharpen it first. I usually work these sliders from bottom to top. It's just the way I do it. Large details, maybe a little bit medium details. This is very easy to overdo it here. You can see I have very slight movements of these sliders, but you could very easily over sharpen your image uh, with these sliders. That's part of the reason why I like going from the bottom up. I think it just is easier to not overdo it when I go from bottom uh, to top. I don't need to mask anything, so I think we're good there. As I mentioned, it really doesn't have any noise in it. Now you have all this landscape slider, and here, if there was any haze, there's just a slight amount of haze out here in the distance, not much. I th think it actually adds to the image though. Uh, but I could move that to the right. A uh, golden hour, I could give everything more of a warm, warm tone. And foliage enhancer, which here we have, of course, a lot of grass. So you can move that to the right. And to tell you the truth, I think all of those are overdoing it a little bit. You know, I want it to, re to look like I remember it looking like and not, you know, something surreal. Now I could finish it off. You could see this first part, the essentials tab. You just go from top to bottom and you could really finish the in image. And I could go with a vignette. I like to add a vignette because typically when someone looks at an image, they're going to look at first and have their eyes linger on the brighter parts of the image. And if you have really bright areas like these clouds up here at the top, they may stray, their, their eyes may stray looking more towards the edges and not in the middle. And subconsciously that will give them a non-pleasing experience when they look at the image. So what I like to do is add a darker vignette to try to subtly push their gaze more towards the middle of the image. And subconsciously it will give them a better experience when they view the image. Now I'm going to skip vignette it for now. I'll come back to it though. I just want to go on and talk about some other things. Now if you had a boring sky, you of course could replace the sky Skylum got a lot of press because of their um, sky replacement tools that are, were found first in Luminar 4 and then later in Luminar AI. I mean, tremendous. Uh, you could do this in Photoshop. It's a little more difficult, although Photoshop now has a more automatic tool that doesn't work anywhere near as well as Luminar AI's tool does. So you could do that. They have augmented sky. I mean, if you wanted to get crazy and you could put, let's say, mountains in the background, something like that. I mean, so easy to do. Uh, but here, I'm not even going to play with any of that. I'm not doing that. Um, atmosphere, uh, if you want to add fog uh, to the image, you could see it's adding it to the top. Layered fog is more towards the middle. Mist is more towards the top again. And haze is more in the middle. It looks like right there, yeah. But I'm not doing any of those either. I just like it the way it is. Sun rays isn't applicable, but if you had a bright point, uh, pointed light source, you could add sun rays from that pointed light source, like the sun or even a street lamp or something like that. Uh, dramatic, you could add drama you know, to the image. This is that HDR look, which many of us loathe, so I'll skip that totally. 
Mood or LUTs? Um, LUTs I use quite a bit actually, but in this image here, again, I want to go for this more natural look, the way I remember it seeing, or remember seeing it. And if I go to a LUT, I mean, it's going to change the look of the image quite a bit. So we're going to totally uh, skip LUTs. Uh, toning, this, you know, if you want to tone the highlights with a specific color and the shadows with another color, you could do that. That's split toning in Lightroom. Same thing. Split toning isn't in Lightroom anymore, but in older versions of Lightroom, there was split toning. Um, matte, you could see how it gives a kind of that film matte look. Again, nothing I'm interested here. Mystical, this is kind of, you just kind of give the darker and brighter areas kind of this glow. Uh, to the to it there's glow below that as you could see same thing you have a drop down there and you could do that Orton effect which many people like I like Orton effects more for portraiture not so much for landscape images but a lot of people do apply them very effectively in landscape images again if you're going for that film look you could add some grain to the image too uh, nothing I'm doing here then we have those portrait adjust adjustments I alluded to at the top of this video uh, very powerful. I'll do uh, videos in the future where I deep dive, uh, take a deep dive into these tools here. Um, optics here is when, one that's at the bottom, and I really wish it was more at the top, uh, because typically you want to do auto distortion uh, correction. You could see how it changed. Did you see that? Still a little blurry. There it is. There's before, and there's after. And chromatic aberration, there's some advanced settings there. If um, it didn't do anything, you're using a manual lens on a, a like a, maybe it's a scan of a, a negative uh, or a slide. So there is no lens and camera information in the metadata. You may have to do it manually down here. You could do that as well. Uh, super contrast, um, I use now and then, but not that often. I'm not going to need it on this image again. Color Harmony, I did a video on uh, this entire tool because it's one of my favorites. Uh, but again, there's actually uh, four tools here, uh, kind of all nested together. But again, I don't think this image needs it. Dodge and Burn, nothing needed here for Dodge and Burn. And Clone, there's nothing in this image I need to get rid of or duplicate. Now, after sitting here talking for a while, it looks over sharpened to me and this happens quite a bit uh, when you're sitting in front of your computer doing it your eyes get fatigued and your brain gets kind of tired and you don't really notice that you're over sharpening it so you could come back in now in here and you could kind of dial everything down a little bit because it was just too much and that's it I really could have been done earlier put the vignette in here to make it a darker vignette I usually like it very subtle. Um, a lot of times I see people put really heavy ones on. I really don't need nothing that heavy. There's advanced settings here if I want to change the roundness of the vignette, the feathering of the vignette, and so on. I'll leave everything at its more default position. What I will do is I will go to inner light, and I'm just going to brighten up the middle. What that'll do is just brighten up the middle just a little bit. Now, it may, it may make me start clipping the highlights. I'll hit the J key again, and you can see that with my adjustments, I started clipping those shadows just a little bit, but that's all right. As I mentioned several times, I don't mind clipping the shadows. I really don't like clipping highlights, though. So I get a, just a bit of red right there, maybe there and there, but that's all right. There. Hit the J key again, turn those off. That's it. That's my process landscape. Uh, to me, it's natural. It's the way I remember it being when I was there, we had some really beautiful blue skies with that beautiful clouds. And I actually went here because uh, this location I'm familiar with. And behind me are two ponds. And I wanted to photograph the ponds behind me. But the sun was behind me in the cloud. And it was all hazy with sun. And it, it just, the pictures didn't look as good as turning around 180 degrees and shooting the other direction. And that's what I did. And this was the, the better scene for the light I was given for the hour I was there. So that's it. Luminar AI, in my opinion, it's a landscape photographer's dream. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.